Well, good morning and happy Easter. Welcome to Crossroads Baptist Church and our Easter Sunday morning message. I pray that this word reaches you doing well. And if you have your Bible, go ahead and begin to turn to the book of Revelation, chapter 1. I'd like to share a few words with you this morning on this uh, beautiful Easter day. There's a few things I'd like to share with you. I've talked to several people this week, and there's one thing, there's one message that almost everybody had in common, and most people said something like this, things are sure going to be different this Easter. And I agree, yes they are. It will be a lot different not having God's house full of people on Easter Sunday morning. It will be a lot different not having our children running, running around with Easter baskets ready to go outside into the church uh, property, to the playground and hunting and finding Easter eggs. It will be a lot different as your pastor for families not to be asking me to, to hold the camera and take their picture. I keep waiting every year for one family to say, hey, would you like to be in the picture with us? But that hasn't happened yet. As a good pastor, I've been taking the pictures for you. I'm going to miss that this year. A lot of things will be different. We won't be singing the, the Easter songs in unison here in the church sanctuary. The Easter scriptures will not be recited from the pulpit in front of a, a bunch of people. Things will be a lot different. Our children won't be walking around showing off their new Easter clothes or the, the young ladies won't be showing off their Easter dresses. But I want to remind you about something this morning in relationship to that statement on this Easter day, this great day that there are still a lot of things that are just the same as every Easter. The tomb is still empty. Jesus Christ, who died for our sins and the sins of the entire world, is still alive and well today. He died a sinner's death, a horrible death, a torturous death. On that cross, he died for myself and he died for you. He was placed in a borrowed tomb. That hasn't changed. And three days later, Jesus Christ arose from the dead. Praise God that those facts are still true today. I agree a lot of things will be different this Easter Sunday morning. But the important thing is, are the things that remain the same. That the tomb is still empty and that we serve a risen Lord and Savior. This morning I encourage you, to get your Bibles and turn to the book of Revelation chapter 1. I want to remind you that he is still in charge. He still reigns. He is still ruling the world. He is still reassuring his saints. And he's right here with us, right where we need him to be. Right in our hearts for all those who accepted him as their Lord and Savior. If you have your Bibles, turn with me. Beginning in verse 17, you say the book of Revelation for Easter Sunday morning. That's right. Verse 17. John's um, message here, or his, uh, his glimpse, if you will, in verse 17, When I saw him, I fell at his feet as though dead. Then he placed his right hand on me and said, Do not be afraid. I am the first and the last. I am the living one. I was dead, and now look, I am alive forever and ever, and I hold the keys of death and Hades. Let's pray. Lord, I thank you for the reading of your word, dear Lord. I thank you for the importance, the, the vitality of it, dear Lord, that applies to each one of our lives, dear Lord. Thank you for loving us, Lord. Thank you for an empty tomb, Lord. Thank you for your son, Jesus. Lord, I pray for the hearer of this word today, that no matter where they are, in their living room, at work, in their car, dear Lord, I pray that you would bless this message upon their heart, dear Lord, that you would anoint the hearer, dear Lord, and allow them, dear Lord, to interpret the message that you have laid on my heart this week. Lord, we love you. We thank you for an empty tomb. We thank you for a risen Savior. And we ask all this in the wonderful name of Jesus Christ, we ask. Amen. What a beautiful set of scripture this morning. There's one thing I want to encourage you about in Easter messages. Never dismiss the importance of an empty tomb. He is the living one, just as scripture says, alive forever and ever. He can't be all that without an empty tomb. We can't bury the message underneath a bunch of bunnies and Easter baskets and pitchers and eggs. The empty tomb has all the significance that we need for Easter. We find the author of Revelation, John, here on the island of Patmos, 
which is in the middle of the Mediterranean Sea. He has been sent there he, uh, some 60 years later after witnessing the ascension of Jesus Christ. He still couldn't quit preaching the gospel. So the government shipped him off to this island in hopes that if they couldn't quiet him down, at least they could put, the, put him at distance away from everyone else. They didn't have to hear him anymore. They didn't have to hear the complaints of those who were against his message. But one thing that he gives us here in this glimpse of, of Christ that he has and this dialect that he has is he gives us several uh, adjectives or, or information that we can share this Easter Sunday morning. And the first thing is that he is the living one. Scripture says that Christ says, Do not be afraid. I am the first and the last. I am the living one. I was dead. And now look, he says, I am alive forever and ever, and I hold the keys to death and hell. To say that we are living is to say that we're not dead. But Christ makes a far greater claim than anything that we can even imagine. Not merely is he saying that I live, but he says that I have life, and I am the source of life, is the message that Christ is giving to his people then and even today. When people come to know Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior, he is giving them, a part of him, eternal life. Eternal life in Jesus Christ, eternal life in heaven. And that's the only way that we can get that eternal living life that he tells us that he can share with you and I. Now those who die who do not know Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior, those who have not placed their hope in an empty tomb, they will live also, but they will live in a sea of fire. But what Christ is, is his message here is, is that this living life in heaven through Christ with him comes only through him. How can we have hope in someone who can make this type of claim? Well, he goes on to explain it to us. Because he has passed through death as one of us as a human and is now living life eternal. This reassurance to his people. Don't we all need a little bit of reassurance today that since through death we have this resurrection of eternal life that Christ has walked, he has been obedient to death, he has lived, he has done, he has accomplished, he says, it is finished, it's done. That message is for you and I today. John could have stopped right there with that one verse. Look at it again with me. He says, when I saw him, I fell at his feet as though dead. Then he placed his right hand on me and said, do not be afraid. I am the first and the last. In the Greek alphabet, the alpha and omega is the first and the last. Christ he reiterates it here. He says, I am the first and the last. That statement there should be plenty enough for you and I to understand what Christ is trying to say, but you have to appreciate the added assurance that he gives us as the who and what of who Christ is and what he has done for you and I. And Scripture says that he is the living one. We know that John called Jesus many names, and all of them are correct. He called him the living water. The living water, the living bread. Other names include living through the Father, the living word, living to make intercession for you and I. And what the scripture says is what Christ says is, he says, I was dead, but now look at me, I live forever and ever. He is saying that he, Jesus Christ, was obedient to death. He conquered death through the resurrection. Jesus is indeed alive forevermore. Amen. He did that for you. And he did that for me. Last night I did something that I normally don't do during this pandemic. I watched a little bit of the news. And this special news program came on. And they were interviewing um, by satellite different um, famous people, athletes, celebrities, well-known people. And they were asking them, what is your opinion about what's going on? What do you think about all this? Almost every one of them had the darkest view of life. All of them said things will never be the same. We're in such a, a dire strait. They shared no message of hope. They communicated no encouragement, no uplifting, no inspiring, no motivating words were given. Now keep that thought in your mind, that earthly view, and then look again at verse 17. And John says, when I saw him, 
I fell at his feet as though dead. Then he placed his right hand on me and said, Do not be afraid. I am the first and the last. I am the living one. I was dead, but now look, I'm alive forever and ever. And I hold the keys to death and Hades. John, in reverence and in awe, fell as though dead at the feet of his Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. This is the same apostle who had leaned upon Jesus in John chapter 13. Falling at his feet was an act of respect, something that our world has lost almost altogether, a respect for God, a respect for Jesus Christ. Many people today say they know Christ, but the evidence is hard to find. But then look at this great moment in Scripture. But then the Lord said something very typical. Very typical. He said, John, fear not. I lost count how many times in the Bible we can recount those words from Christ. Fear not. But he tells John to fear not. Do not be afraid. Isn't that the message that we need in our day and time today? Encouragement. Hope from Jesus Christ, if the world would just simply put their trust and faith in Jesus Christ, they too could have the peace and assurance that only Christ can give and keep in mind that Jesus Christ is still the Prince of Peace. We need not fear life because He is the Living One. No matter what's going on in life, no matter what type of pandemic takes place, He is still the living one, and we can declare that today, this Easter Sunday morning, and any other day of the week, because the tomb is still empty. Christians have that hope. He is alive forever and ever. The second point I want to bring to you today in Scripture that He says that, he was dead. He says, he was dead, but now look. He says, I'm alive forever and ever. Not only was Christ dead, he became dead. He became dead, if you will. He suffered the torture of the cross. And you can't help but think of the book of Isaiah chapter 53. Beginning in verse 3, he was despised and rejected by mankind. A man of suffering and familiar with pain. Surely he bore up our pain and bore our suffering. But he was pierced for our transgressions and he was crushed for our iniquities. The punishment that brought us peace was on him and by his wounds we are healed. Verse 6, we all like sheep have gone astray. Each of us has been turned to his own way. And the Lord has laid on him the iniquity of us all. He was led like a lamb to the slaughter. And as a sheep before his shears is silent, and he did not open his mouth. Christ was crucified. That's a fact. Spikes were driven in his hands and in his feet. A circle of thorns was placed upon his head. His clothes were divided up amongst the soldiers. He was mocked. He was rejected. He was despised. He was insulted. Jesus Christ died on that hill. That hill called Mount Calvary. Jesus Christ died on that cross. The same dead that the disciples saw on that cross the same dead as we bury people today. The same dead that Jesus took upon himself. Joseph took that dead body and wrapped it in cloth and placed it in a borrowed tomb. He's speaking about the same dead that Mary Magdalene and Mary the mother of James and others witnessed die and be buried. 
the same dead that the soldiers witnessed when the earth shook and the rocks cracked and the graves opened, that same dead that those soldiers witnessed when in panic and fear they exclaimed, Surely he was the Son of God. Look at that statement again. You can find this in the Gospels that the soldiers exclaimed, Surely he was the Son of God. Past tense. He was the Son of God. They knew. These, are, these centurion soldiers, these, these Roman soldiers, they knew that no man could withstand the punishment, the beating, the crucifixion that they had given Jesus and still be alive. And their statement is, He was the Son of God. Church, listen to me. They saw Him bleed. They saw Christ take His last breath. They knew that the torture that they inflicted upon this man, they knew it. They had a hand in it. And they knew that no man could withstand this type of punishment. And their statement was that surely he is dead. Christ gives that great exclamation also. Chapter 1 of Revelation that we're reading now, verse 17 and 18. He makes that claim. He says, I was dead. But the third point I want to make to you in Scripture, he says, but I am alive forever and ever, and I hold the keys of death and Hades. Praise God for that promise and that truth that we have in Scripture. Notice something here about the dialect that's being done here. John and Jesus taking turns here, and it's almost like Jesus takes the mic from John and gives his firsthand, first account of what has taken place. It's almost like John... He, you know, in verse 17, he says, when I saw him, he says, when I saw Christ, he says, in awe and reverence, being in the presence of the risen Savior, he says, I fell as I was dead at his feet. And then he says, in my, in my astonishment, Christ took his hand and placed it upon me and said, do not fear. And then it's almost as if Christ takes the mic. And he gives this statement. He says, I am the first and last. In other words, he still is. He says, I am the living one. He says, I, I still am. Life eternal only comes through me. He says, I was dead. And he says, and now look at the great testimony that Christ has given. I am alive forever and ever. And he says, and I hold the key to death and Hades. This morning, church, wherever you are, if that don't get your motor going, you need a major overhaul. Jesus Christ is the living one. He, he was dead, but he's not dead anymore. And he's alive forever and ever. The stone has been rolled away. The tomb is empty. Eyewitnesses talked about it. They dwelt with Christ after his death. After the empty tomb, it's not a hoax. It's not a good folk story. It's not a government cover-up that some would like to suggest. It's not just a good man who did good deeds, whose body was secretly taken away to intrigue the curiosity of people. It's none of that. His statement and what we know to be true as believers in Jesus Christ, he is alive forevermore, and he holds the keys of death and Hades. Let me tell you something about that last statement in closing. To hold the keys is to say that you're the person who has to say so. He can release the door of sin and hell to those who come to him. He can free the chains of the sinner. He can give eternal life to those who call upon his name. How? Because he holds the keys. He can release the oppression and guilt of a burdened soul. He can set the captive free of discouragement and distress. He can raise to life the man whose path has been a roller coaster ride of sin and headed straight to hell. To hold the keys is to simply say that he has control. He will unlock the prison doors for those who follow him. 
This is a great expression of his sovereignty, his power, and the authority that only Jesus Christ holds. If you still have your Bibles open to chapter 1 of the book of Revelation, look at verse 12. Speaking about what John was seeing here, and he says in verse 13, And among the lampstands was someone like a son of man. Not the son of God, but the son of man. Now he is and was and still is today the Son of God, but John saw him as the Son of Man. John saw this glorified state of a human body. John saw it and was reminded that the Jesus Christ some 60 years prior who died a horrible, terrible, torturous death on the cross and was placed in a rock tomb and covered up by a big stone was alive and well today as if he needed reminded that Jesus Christ is still alive. And he saw him as the Son of Man. Someone that we can recognize. The Son of Man. Someone who can relate to our fears. Who can relate to our problems, our discouragement, our disappointments, our failures. And all our fears, the Son of Man and still the Son of God. Church, that man is Jesus Christ. He is the living one. He was dead, but he is alive forever and ever. And he holds the key to death and hell. That's where my hope is today. Indeed, he is the living one. He was alive and well. He was killed. He states it himself. He says, I was dead. But the hope came in the morning of an empty tomb. And he says, I am alive forever. And as if that wasn't enough, he says, and ever. And he says, I hold the keys. Maybe today, maybe today is the day that you are sitting there in your living room and you say, you know what, I'm not in the sanctuary. I'm not amongst a bunch of people, my peers, my family, my friends. Maybe today is the day that you say, I get it. Today is the day that you say, I finally get it. With all the uncertainty in the world, today is the day that we say that I need Jesus Christ leading the way. I need Jesus Christ to be Lord of my life. If that's you today, accept Him as your Lord and Savior. Confess your sins. Make Him Lord of your life. Believe on His name and call upon the name of the Lord. And Scripture says, and you shall be saved. Or maybe today, it's the day that you say, you know what? Today is the day that I need to get serious about Jesus Christ. I've given my heart to Him. I accepted Him as my Lord and Savior, but I've, I've not quite lived up to what I know Christ wants me to be. I haven't quite lived up to the sacrifice that He has made on my behalf to be the Christian that He has called me to, de to be. If that's you today, maybe... Today's the day that you need to get certain about your Christianity. Lord, forgive me of my sins. Straighten my path, Lord. Put me back on my feet and send me on my way, Lord, with you guiding the way. Lord, help me to be stronger and wiser. Lord, help me to be obedient to your service and to the gospel of Jesus Christ. Lord, help me to put you first in my life. I told you at the beginning of this message that over the last two weeks I've talked to a lot of people and almost every one of them had the same message. Brother Jeff, things are just going to be different this year. And I agree, they are. But I, I've already pointed out the things that are the same. But I've heard these people. Now I'm not talking about just church people. People all over. I, I, I read it on social media. I see it on the, on the TV. People say that this Easter Sunday won't be the same. But 
But from my heart to yours, sadly, chances are, sadly enough, things would have not have been different. Chances are everything would have been just the same. We wouldn't have encouraged our family members and our friends, our, our immediate family. We wouldn't have encouraged the lost and strayed to come and sit in the church pew with us on Easter Sunday morning. We wouldn't have strengthened our own walk sitting here on Easter Sunday. We would have let the Word of God just go right over our heads or not even penetrate our heart. We might even have woke up Easter Sunday morning and let a little bit of rain keep us from coming to God's house. Chances are, perhaps, things would not have been any different this Easter Sunday morning. Yes, things are a little bit different today, but then there again, things might have been just the same. Let today be the day that we say, Jesus, I'm putting you first in my life. Let today be the day that we say that I'm going to do better. Today, my hope, my trust, and my faith, Lord, is in you. Today is the day. Let's pray. Lord, I thank you for this word that has resonated through our hearts, dear Lord. It has penetrated our hearts and souls, dear Lord. And I pray that it would move us to an act of confession and an act of obedience, dear Lord, to you for the wonderful sacrifice that your son Jesus has paid for our life. Lord, thank you for loving us, Lord. Thank you for the hearer of this word today. And thank you for loving us beyond measure. In the only name that saves, Jesus Christ, we ask all this. Amen. And the psalmist said, you ask me how I know he lives. He lives within my heart. Jesus loves you, church. I love you. Until we meet again, God bless.